Ladies and gentlemen, if you are enjoying my videos, please click the like button. It is the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. I would be very grateful to you. Sleep paralysis when the darkness becomes real. Scary story published by Scare Fiction. Chapter 1. The Prologue. The night draped its obsidian cloak over the city, casting shadows that danced with the flickering glow of streetlights. In the heart of it all, I, a skeptic by nature, found solace in the routine of bedtime rituals. As I nestled into the embrace of the sheets, the soft whisper of the wind outside lulled me into a false sense of security. Each night was a repetition of the last, a comforting cycle of familiarity that I clung to like a lifeline. The room, illuminated only by the dim glow of the bedside lamp, seemed to exhale a sigh of contentment as I drifted into the realm of dreams. My partner, Emma, lay beside me, her rhythmic breathing, a symphony of serenity. We exchanged murmured words of affection, the warmth of her presence a balm against the chill of the night. Dialogue between us flowed effortlessly, painting a portrait of domestic bliss. Good night, love, she whispered, her voice a gentle caress against the stillness of the room. Good night, Emma, I replied, the words tinged with the tenderness born of years spent in each other's company. And so, with a final exchange of affection, we surrendered to the embrace of sleep. But as the tendrils of unconsciousness enveloped me, a sense of unease gnawed at the edges of my consciousness. It was subtle at first, a whisper of disquiet that danced on the periphery of my thoughts. Strong verbs, like crept and haunted, painted a picture of growing dread, each heartbeat a drumbeat of impending terror. The room grew oppressively silent, the air heavy with a sense of foreboding that seemed to suffocate me. In the darkness, shadows twisted and contorted, their movements fluid and sinuous like serpents slithering through the night. I tried to call out to Emma, to seek solace in her comforting presence, but my voice was nothing more than a strangled whisper caught in the grip of fear. Dialogue between us dissolved into silence, the words lost in the void of the night. And then it happened. A sensation like icy fingers brushed against the nape of my neck, sending a shiver of dread coursing through my veins. I lay paralyzed, my muscles refusing to obey the frantic commands of my mind. Panic surged within me, a primal instinct that screamed for flight in the face of an unseen threat. In that moment, I realized the true horror of my predicament. I was trapped ensnared in the grip of an unseen terror that lurked just beyond the reach of my senses. Strong verbs, like ensnared and suffocated, painted a picture of suffocating helplessness, each heartbeat a drumbeat of dread. And as I lay there, trapped in the prison of my own body, I knew with a sickening certainty that the darkness had become real. But this was only the beginning for lurking in the shadows, unseen and unheard, a malevolent presence waited patiently for its moment to strike. And when it did, the true nightmare would begin. Chapter 2. The First Encounter The night hung heavy with an oppressive stillness, suffocating in its silence. I lay entwined in a web of sheets, my body cocooned in the illusion of safety. But beneath the surface, a storm raged, a tempest of fear and uncertainty that threatened to consume me whole. As sleep claimed me, I drifted into a realm of shadow and darkness. Strong verbs, like plunged and engulfed, painted a picture of descent into the abyss, each heartbeat a drumbeat of dread echoing in the cavernous expanse of my mind. And then it happened. A sensation like a leaden weight pressed down upon me, crushing me beneath its suffocating embrace. I tried to scream, to flee from the encroaching darkness, but my voice was nothing more than a whisper lost in the void.
paralyzed. I lay ensnared in the grip of terror, my muscles locked in a vice-like grip that refused to loosen its hold. Strong verbs, like trapped and ensnared, painted a picture of suffocating helplessness, each breath a struggle against the crushing weight of fear. And as I lay there, trapped in the prison of my own body, a sense of dread washed over me like a tidal wave. I was not alone. In the shadows, a figure lurked, its presence a malevolent presence that seemed to leech the very light from the room. I could feel its eyes boring into me, cold and unyielding as obsidian. I tried to call out to Emma, to seek refuge in her comforting embrace, but my voice faltered, caught in the grip of fear. Dialogue between us dissolved into silence, the words lost in the darkness that enveloped us. But Emma sensed the shift in the air, the subtle undercurrent of unease that hung heavy in the room. She reached out to me, her touch a lifeline in the sea of uncertainty. What's wrong, love? She whispered, her voice a gentle caress against the stillness of the night. I tried to respond, to articulate the terror that threatened to consume me whole, but my words failed me. I could only gaze into her eyes, pleading for understanding. And in that moment, I knew that the darkness had become real, and it would not rest until it had claimed me as its own. Chapter 3 Haunting Dreams Night after night, I found myself ensnared in a labyrinth of nightmares, each more vivid and horrifying than the last. As I drifted into the realm of dreams, strong verbs like plunged and descended painted a picture of descent into madness, each step taking me deeper into the abyss. In my dreams, the world twisted and contorted, warped by unseen forces that lurked in the shadows. Sensory details assaulted my senses, the stench of decay mingling with the metallic tang of blood, the taste of bile rising in the back of my throat. I stumbled through a landscape of horrors, my footsteps echoing in the darkness like a death knell. Everywhere I turned, grotesque figures lurked, their faces twisted into masks of agony and despair. I tried to scream, to flee from the nightmare that threatened to consume me whole, but my voice was nothing more than a whisper lost in the cacophony of terror. And yet, amidst the chaos, one thought burned bright in my mind. I had to escape. Dialogue with myself became a frantic plea for salvation, each word a desperate cry for release from the horrors that plagued my sleep. But the nightmares only grew worse, their tendrils stretching ever deeper into the recesses of my mind. I could feel myself slipping, teetering on the edge of sanity as the darkness closed in around me. And then, just when I thought I could bear it no longer, a voice broke through the haze of terror, cutting through the darkness like a beacon of hope. Come back to me, love, Emma whispered, her voice a lifeline in the sea of madness. I reached out to her, desperate to grasp onto something, anything that could pull me back from the brink. But as I drew closer, I realized the truth. Emma was not real. She was nothing more than a figment of my fevered imagination, a cruel mirage in the desert of my mind. And yet, in that moment, she was my only anchor in a sea of madness. With every ounce of strength I could muster, I fought to break free from the nightmare's grip to claw my way back to reality. And as I emerged from the depths of despair, I knew one thing for certain, the horrors that plagued my sleep would not easily be forgotten. Chapter 4 The Entity Revealed The days blurred into nights, each passing moment haunted by the specter of the shadowy figure that lurked in the depths of my nightmares. But as the darkness encroached upon my waking hours, its presence became impossible to ignore. I found myself consumed by a sense of unease, a primal instinct that screamed for flight in the face of an unseen threat. Strong verbs, like gnawed and consumed, 
painted a picture of growing dread, each heartbeat a drumbeat of impending terror. In the depths of my despair, I turned to research, desperate for answers in a sea of uncertainty. I delved into ancient texts and forbidden lore, searching for clues to the identity of the entity that haunted my dreams. With each passing day, I uncovered fragments of a dark and sinister past, a tapestry of horror woven from the threads of centuries-old legend. Strong verbs, like unearthed and uncovered, painted a picture of discovery, each revelation sending shivers down my spine. But the more I learned, the more I realized the true extent of the danger that lurked in the shadows. Dialogue with myself became a frantic plea for understanding, each word a desperate cry for salvation from the horrors that plagued my sleep. And then, one fateful night, the entity revealed itself in all its terrible glory. It emerged from the darkness like a specter of death, its form twisted and contorted into a grotesque mockery of humanity. I tried to scream, to flee from the nightmare that threatened to consume me whole, but my voice was nothing more than a whisper lost in the void. Dialogue with myself dissolved into silence, the words lost in the darkness that enveloped us. But even as terror gripped me in its icy embrace, I knew one thing for certain. The entity that haunted my dreams was no mere figment of my imagination. It was real, and it hungered for my soul. Chapter 5. Descent into Madness The nights grew longer, stretching into eternity as sleep paralysis tightened its grip on my mind like a vice. With each passing episode, my grasp on reality slipped further, unraveling the fragile threads of sanity that held me together. Strong verbs, like fractured and splintered, painted a picture of my crumbling mental state, each heartbeat a reminder of the chaos that lurked just beyond the edge of consciousness. I found myself consumed by a sense of paranoia, a gnawing fear that whispered dark secrets in the shadows. Dialogue with myself became a twisted dance of desperation and despair each word a reflection of the torment that plagued my soul. But even as I struggled to hold on to the fragments of my shattered mind, the darkness closed in around me like a suffocating blanket. I could feel its tendrils creeping through the cracks, seeping into every corner of my being. In the depths of my despair, I turned to Emma, seeking solace in her comforting presence. But even she could not shield me from the horrors that lurked within. What's wrong, love? She asked, her voice tinged with concern. I tried to respond, to articulate the terror that threatened to consume me whole, but my words failed me. Dialogue between us dissolved into silence, the weight of my fear crushing the air from my lungs. And then, just when I thought I could bear it no longer, the darkness spoke to me. Its voice was a whisper in the night, a sinister melody that echoed in the depths of my mind. You cannot escape me, it hissed, its words like poison in my ears. I tried to scream, to flee from the nightmare that threatened to swallow me whole, but my voice was nothing more than a whisper lost in the void. Strong verbs, like trapped and ensnared, painted a picture of suffocating helplessness. Each breath a struggle against the darkness that surrounded me. But even as I teetered on the brink of madness, I knew one thing for certain. The descent into darkness had only just begun, and there was no escaping its grasp. Chapter 6. Seeking Answers Desperation clawed at my chest like a ravenous beast as I sought solace in the arms of expertise. The darkness that plagued my nights seemed insurmountable, a relentless adversary that defied reason and logic. With determination fueling my every step, 
I embarked on a journey into the unknown, seeking answers to the questions that haunted my every waking moment. Strong verbs, like charged and pursued, painted a picture of my relentless pursuit of truth, each heartbeat a drumbeat of determination echoing in the cavernous expanse of my mind. I sought out experts in sleep disorders and the occult, hoping to find refuge in the wisdom of their knowledge. But instead, I found skepticism and superstition in equal measure, a tangled web of doubt and disbelief that threatened to ensnare me in its grasp. Dialogue-driven scenes unfolded before me, revealing the conflict between science and the supernatural that raged within the hearts of those who dared to seek answers. Each word was a battlefield, a clash of ideologies that left me torn between the safety of reason and the allure of the unknown. But even as doubt gnawed at the edges of my certainty, I refused to yield to despair. With each setback, I pressed onward, driven by a desperation that burned like wildfire in my veins. And then, just when I thought all hope was lost, a glimmer of light pierced the darkness. A whispered rumor led me to the doorstep of a figure shrouded in mystery, a guardian of secrets long forgotten. I approached with caution, my heart pounding in my chest like a drumbeat of anticipation. Strong verbs, like trembled and quivered, painted a picture of my fear and excitement, each step a dance of uncertainty on the tightrope between salvation and damnation. And when I finally stood before the enigmatic figure, I knew that my journey was far from over. For the answers I sought lay not in the safety of certainty, but in the depths of darkness that lurked just beyond the edge of reason. Chapter 7. The Toll on Relationships The darkness that plagued my nights seeped into every aspect of my life, poisoning the relationships I held most dear. As I became consumed by my obsession, a growing distance formed between myself and those I loved, like a gaping chasm threatening to swallow us whole. Dialogue-heavy scenes unfolded before me, each word a dagger that pierced the fragile bonds of friendship and family. Strong verbs, like fractured and splintered, painted a picture of the growing divide between us, each heartbeat a drumbeat of despair echoing in the cavernous expanse of my mind. I watched helplessly as Emma withdrew into herself, her once bright smile now a distant memory. Our conversations became stilted and strained, filled with awkward pauses and unspoken accusations. What's wrong, love? She asked, her voice tinged with concern, but I had no answers to give no solace to offer in the face of my own torment. Dialogue between us dissolved into silence, the weight of my guilt crushing the air from my lungs. And as the days stretched into weeks, I watched in despair as the rift between us widened. Friends and family alike grew distant, their once unwavering support replaced by whispered doubts and hesitant glances. I tried to reach out, to bridge the gap that had formed between us, but my efforts were in vain. Strong verbs, like struggled and sought painted a picture of my desperation, each attempt to mend the fractures in our relationships met with cold indifference. And yet, amidst the despair, a flicker of hope remained. For even in the darkest moments, love had a way of shining through the shadows, a beacon of light that refused to be extinguished. I clung to that hope like a lifeline, determined to fight for the relationships that meant everything to me. With each passing day, I vowed to do better, to be better for the sake of those who still believed in me. But as the darkness continued to encroach upon my life, I knew that the toll on our relationships would not easily be overcome. And I feared that the damage that had been done was irreparable. Chapter 8. Confrontation The time had come to face my tormentor head-on, to confront the darkness that had haunted my every waking moment. 
With every fiber of my being screaming in protest, I steeled myself for the battle that lay ahead. I ventured into the depths of the night, guided by a determination that burned like a fire in my chest. Strong verbs, like charged and braced, painted a picture of my resolve, each step a testament to the strength of my will. As I confronted the entity, a sense of dread washed over me like a tidal wave, threatening to pull me under its suffocating embrace. But I refused to yield to fear, drawing upon the courage that lay buried deep within my soul. Dialogue between us crackled with tension, each word a weapon in the battle of wills that raged between us. Strong verbs, like confronted and challenged, painted a picture of the intensity of our struggle, each breath a testament to the ferocity of our determination. But even as I fought to banish the darkness that threatened to consume me whole, I could feel its tendrils wrapping around my mind, pulling me ever closer to the brink of despair. With every ounce of strength I could muster, I pushed back against the darkness, refusing to surrender to its insidious influence. Strong verbs, like struggled and resisted, painted a picture of my defiance, each heartbeat a drumbeat of defiance echoing in the cavernous expanse of my mind. And then, just when I thought all hope was lost, a flicker of light pierced the darkness, illuminating the path to salvation. With renewed determination, I press forward, driven by a sense of purpose that burned brighter than the stars themselves. As the battle raged on, I could feel the darkness weakening, its grip loosening with every passing moment. And as the first rays of dawn broke through the night, I knew that victory was within my grasp. With one final surge of strength, I banished the darkness from my life, casting it back into the abyss from whence it came. And as the last echoes of its malevolent presence faded into the night, I knew that the nightmare was finally over. But even as I emerged victorious, I knew that the battle against the darkness would never truly be won. For it lurked in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to strike once more. And yet, in the face of adversity, I would stand strong, ready to confront whatever horrors the night may bring. Chapter 9. The Battle Within Darkness enveloped me like a suffocating shroud as I stood face to face with the entity that had tormented me for so long. Its presence loomed large, a malevolent force that seemed to devour the very light around it. I could feel its icy tendrils creeping through the recesses of my mind, twisting and contorting my thoughts into a grotesque dance of despair. Descriptive passages unfolded before me, painting a vivid portrait of the horror that surrounded us. The air was thick with the stench of decay, the ground beneath my feet cold and unforgiving. Strong verbs like lurked and loomed conveyed the sense of dread that hung heavy in the air, each moment a testament to the suffocating grip of fear. And yet, even in the face of such overwhelming darkness, a spark of defiance flickered within me. With every fiber of my being, I refused to yield to the despair that threatened to consume me whole. I squared my shoulders and met the entity's gaze head on, a silent challenge in the midst of the chaos. Dialogue-driven scenes unfolded before me, each word a reflection of the internal conflict that raged within me. You cannot defeat me, the entity hissed, its voice a sinister whisper that echoed in the depths of my mind. But I refused to back down. I will not let you control me any longer, I countered, my voice steady despite the tremors that racked my body. As the confrontation escalated, I could feel the darkness pressing in on all sides, threatening to crush me beneath its weight. Descriptive passages immersed me in the horror of the moment, each word a visceral reminder of the stakes at hand. I fought with every ounce of strength I could muster, my mind a battleground of conflicting emotions. Fear and doubt gnawed at the edges of my resolve, threatening to undermine my efforts at every turn. But even as the darkness closed in around me, 
a glimmer of hope pierced the gloom. With every passing moment, I could feel the entity weakening, its hold on me slipping like sand through my fingers. And then, in a burst of blinding light, the darkness was banished, vanquished by the power of my will. I stood victorious, battered but unbroken, the echoes of the battle still ringing in my ears. As I gazed out into the darkness, I knew that the road ahead would not be easy. The scars left behind by the confrontation would linger, a reminder of the horrors I had faced. But I also knew that I was stronger now, forged in the crucible of adversity. And with that knowledge burning bright within me, I took my first tentative steps toward a future bathed in the light of hope. Chapter 10, Escape or Sacrifice. The moment of reckoning had arrived, a crossroads where every path led to uncertainty and peril. As I stood on the precipice of destiny, the weight of my decision hung heavy upon my shoulders, threatening to crush me beneath its unbearable burden. Dialogue-driven scenes unfolded before me, each word a dagger that pierced the fragile veil of my resolve. Strong verbs, like agonized and tortured, painted a picture of the turmoil that raged within me, each heartbeat a drumbeat of indecision echoing in the cavernous expanse of my mind. I wrestled with my inner demons, torn between the safety of surrender and the uncertainty of defiance. Dialogue with myself became a twisted dance of desperation and despair, each word a reflection of the torment that plagued my soul. But even as doubt gnawed at the edges of my certainty, a flicker of hope remained. For even in the darkest moments, love had a way of shining through the shadows, a beacon of light that refused to be extinguished. I clung to that hope like a lifeline, determined to fight for the future that lay beyond the darkness. With every ounce of strength I could muster, I pushed back against the despair that threatened to consume me whole. And then, just when I thought all hope was lost, a whisper broke through the silence, a voice from the depths of my soul. You cannot give up, it said, its words a gentle caress against the tumultuous storm of my thoughts. With renewed determination, I pressed forward, driven by a sense of purpose that burned brighter than the stars themselves. Strong verbs, like resolved and determined, painted a picture of my defiance each breath a testament to the strength of my will. And as I faced the darkness once more, I knew that the choice was clear. I would not surrender to despair. I would not give in to fear. For even in the face of adversity, I would stand strong, ready to confront whatever horrors the night may bring. And with that realization, I took my first step towards freedom, towards a future bathed in the light of hope. Chapter 11, The Aftermath. The aftermath of the ordeal weighed heavy upon my shoulders, a burden too great to bear alone. In the wake of the darkness that had consumed me, I found myself adrift in a sea of uncertainty, struggling to find my way back to solid ground. Descriptive passages unfolded before me, each word a brushstroke that painted a portrait of the lingering trauma that haunted my every waking moment. Strong verbs, like haunted and tormented, painted a picture of the nightmares that continued to plague my sleep. Each night, a battle against the demons that lurked within. But even as I grappled with the darkness that threatened to consume me once more, a flicker of hope remained. For even in the darkest moments, love had a way of shining through the shadows, a beacon of light that refused to be extinguished. Dialogue-driven scenes unfolded before me, each word a thread that wove together the tapestry of my journey toward healing and acceptance. Strong verbs, like confided and comforted, painted a picture of the support that surrounded me, each word a reminder 
that I was not alone in my struggle. With every passing day, I took small steps forward, determined to reclaim the life that had been stolen from me. I sought solace in the embrace of loved ones, drawing strength from their unwavering support. What's wrong, love? Emma asked, her voice tinged with concern. I tried to articulate the depths of my despair, to put into words the pain that threatened to consume me whole. But the words caught in my throat, suffocated by the weight of my grief. And yet, even in the silence, Emma understood. With a gentle touch, she reminded me that I was not defined by the darkness that had consumed me, that there was light yet to be found in the depths of despair. With each passing day, I felt the tendrils of darkness loosening their grip, relinquishing their hold on my soul. Descriptive passages explored the beauty of the world around me, each word a reminder that there was still wonder to be found in the midst of tragedy. And as I stood on the threshold of a new beginning, I knew that the journey toward healing would be long and arduous. But with love as my guide, I would find my way back to the light. And in the end, I would emerge stronger than I had ever been before. Chapter 12, The Epilogue. As I stood on the threshold of a new beginning, the echoes of the past whispered in the recesses of my mind, a reminder of the journey that had brought me to this moment. I traced the scars that marred my skin, tangible reminders of the darkness that had once consumed me whole. Descriptive passages unfolded before me, each word a brushstroke that painted a portrait of the struggles and triumphs that had shaped me into the person I had become. Strong verbs, like contemplated and reflected, painted a picture of the introspection that consumed me. Each moment, a journey into the depths of my soul. And yet, even as I grappled with the scars left behind by the darkness, a flicker of hope remained. For even in the darkest moments, there was light to be found, a beacon of hope that refused to be extinguished. Dialogue-driven scenes unfolded before me. Each word, a reflection of the doubts and fears that lingered in the corners of my mind. Strong verbs, like questioned and struggled, painted a picture of the uncertainty that clouded my thoughts. Each word, a reminder that the journey toward healing was far from over. What now? Emma asked, her voice tinged with uncertainty. I tried to articulate the hopes and dreams that danced on the horizon to put into words the sense of possibility that pulsed through my veins. But the words eluded me, lost in the vast expanse of uncertainty that stretched out before me. And yet, even in the silence, Emma understood. With a gentle touch, she reminded me that the future was ours to shape, that there was power in the choices we made. With each passing moment, I felt the weight of the past lifting from my shoulders replaced by a sense of liberation that filled me with hope. Descriptive passages explored the beauty of the world around me, each word a reminder that there was still wonder to be found in the midst of darkness. And as I looked toward the future, I knew that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges and uncertainties. But with love as my guide, I was ready to face whatever lay in store. For even in the darkest moments, there was light to be found, and in the end, it was the light that would lead me home.